So hello and welcome to J Designs. Today what we're going to be doing is taking a look at these Apex Designs um, rapid deflators and I also got these sway bar uh, disconnects. So super, super cool. I've seen a lot of people uh, do installs on these sway bar disconnects, but I don't think I've really ever seen anyone do. We're kind of going to do an unboxing, but the main thing I want to do is I want to talk about some of the engineering and design decisions that went into these things because there's honestly some really, really impressive stuff in here. So. Fair warning, I have opened this up. I've got all the, the tape cut just so we can go through it quickly. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first off, it's actually a really pretty box. Apex Design, it's got the wolf head on here. Opener up, sticker, it's got impeccable instructions. And it says, should not be installed by uh, a skilled mechanic or should be installed by a skilled mechanic. Um, I've looked through the instructions, it looks fine, so I guess that means I'm a skilled mechanic, right? But the crazy part is these are absolutely exceptional instructions. Full color, amazing pictures, really well laid out. Like, I don't think I've seen instructions better than this right here. And the crazy thing too is they definitely did not need to go through all of the trouble of making these instructions because they have a YouTube video that would have cost them nothing to produce. But, you know, super cool to see uh, the instructions in here as well. Came with a sticker. I already put the sticker on my truck, so, uh, I only put stickers on my truck for companies that I think are exceptional. And this is one of the companies that uh, are going on the truck already. And I haven't even installed these yet, but I put the wolf head on this way. Uh, the wolf head's supposed to be this way. You can see it on their, on their logo here. The wolf's supposed to be like howling up to the sky or whatever. Oh, well, I, it came with two stickers. This is the uh, second one, so I might put it the right way. But anyways, looking more at the box. So you can see it says designed in Utah with some very non utah -y looking mountains. Those look like Colorado mountains to me. Anyways, uh, patent pending, and then it says shifting the design paradigm. This is like an exceptional box. The presentation's really good. And then they've even got, uh, we'll get into that box in a second, but you can see how you know nice the box design. There's a piece here to stop these, uh, these rod ends from getting bent. You can see they've hit the box on this side, but on that side didn't penetrate. So I guess it's fine. This little thing's doing their job. But let's look at this. So I also got the deflators. We'll get to these uh, quick links real quick in a second here. Let's look at these deflators real quick. First off, for the uh, you're going to hand this probably to your um, your tire shop. I must imagine most people won't be installing them themselves. But uh, yeah, it's a little thing. It's got the torque specs for the tire shop, stuff like that. And then this is the little rapid deflator. So really nice cap. You unscrew it. How these work essentially. You unscrew it. Uh, the Schrader valve, honestly, like the finish on this is exceptional. It's pretty wild, man. Um, obviously, they're machining this, but pull the red thing, and it's got these four giant ports that absolutely dump air out of this thing. So the ultimate choke point of any airing up or airing down system, which is something we do a lot in the four-wheel drive industry, the ultimate choke point is this. So this is a Schrader valve. This is what you would see in a normal valve stem, and this is also what's in here. But, but what you do by pulling this lever is you completely bypass this valve stem. So this valve stem will be in the top here, and this is... You know, obviously tires on this side, it just absolutely is going to dump air out. These things are super fast. I have friends that have these and they're amazing. But what I did want to talk about is this straighter valve. So whether you're airing up or airing down without these things, you've got this little tiny orifice. If you see that part moving right underneath the moving part, there's a tiny little hole there. And that's essentially where all your air needs to pass through that tiny little orifice. So this is the ultimate choke point in any airing system. So if you can get this out of the way, you can air up or air down way faster. So at least for airing down, because when you're airing up, we still got to go through the straighter valve. At least for airing down with these things, it's going to make for a very, very quick, quick um, airing down experience. And the cool thing about this too, is you can close it and you can put your, um, your inflating tool to just check your pressures right on here. And you can just open and close as you're deflating and you're going to be able to check the pressure as you're deflating. It's going to be really quick. Uh, another thing too, they don't advertise it anymore, but I know when these things first came out, they were saying there's a different uh, design around the base of the Schrader valve in here that actually made airing up faster. Um, I don't know if that's still a thing. They don't advertise that anymore. I don't see it on their website, but um, I'll definitely check it uh, with my four tire air system and see uh, if that makes airing up faster as well. But we'll put that aside for now when I talk about the, uh, the main thing here. So pulling out one of the quick links here, these are really nice. Interesting thing here is a little piece of plastic on here. Um, and the reason for that, I can only assume 
is that this piece here is aluminum. It's very, very, very nice machined. All of the, uh, the uh, I don't know, literature, lettering here is, is exceptional. Um, but anyways, this is aluminum and this is a stainless steel pen. So I imagine as this is rattling around as it's on your vehicle, it's gonna wear in. It's not gonna wear in under shipping because they put this little piece of plastic in here, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be a wear point. So all this lettering will be kind of worn off. Some of the surface finish won't look so good as this is kind of knocking back and forth, but everything else looks exceptional. It's got a nice, it's not too heavy, not too soft click action to pull this thing apart. So the way this works is this comes apart and then your sway bar would attach to this end and this part would go to your um, upper ball joint. And then it allows the sway bar to move freely when this piece is not installed. It's pretty, pretty darn cool. There's an upper ball joint in this part right here and it pivots, moves around nice and freely. Um, it's interesting, just a thing to look at. There's a spring on the outside. So generally when you see a ball joint, these springs are internal. They won't be on the outside of the uh, of this boot here that's protecting this ball joint. But uh, shouldn't be an issue. This is most likely some uh, good alloy of, uh, of uh, stainless steel. So it's not gonna, uh, not gonna rust on you. Something I kind of don't like seeing, we'll pull the other camera up here is there's a bunch of little baby grub screws on this thing. So I imagine that's how you would disassemble this. You'd undo that grub screw and then this piece would slide down the shaft and there's a, a piece right there in the end that's too flat. You grab it with a wrench. This bottom piece would come off, I'd imagine, and all this stuff would come off. But uh, generally grub screws are hard to tighten up. They're just always like super, super tiny and sometimes they come loose. So hopefully they lock tighted those things. I'm sure they did. Judging by the, uh, the exceptional quality of the rest of this kit, they probably uh, did a great job with that. It's also interesting too, you can see that blue stuff inside of this where the upper ball joint would go through. Um, you can actually see straight through down to the ball joint. So this boot is not greasable, there's no zerks anywhere, but technically you could unscrew this off of the uh, lower ball joint and you could put grease into the top of this guy and re-grease it. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that initially, but that's, that's how it is. It's pretty interesting. Um, that grease will probably help for assembly too of that, uh, the threads going down into this guy. <clears throat> so we'll put this back together real quick. I'll show you how it, how it works again. Whoop. If you can't tell, it's my first time using these things. So all of the pins as well, or these are nice stainless steel pins. Um, they're going to wear on the aluminum, but it's probably going to happen really, really slowly just because there's a lot of surface area engaging between the uh, st stainless steel pin and the aluminum should be fine. But this rattling back and forth, that's contacting same spot over and over again. Anyways, super nice to see a little lanyard on there. These are, uh, yeah, just exceptionally made. And then it's got a, we'll talk about, there's another piece in here. It's really cool. And it rides on these flats. They actually give you the, uh, the piece to drive this thing. It's super cool. You would normally need a, uh, a crow's foot to drive on that, but they would supply it. They supply it to you. And this is the little air cylinder. Pretty darn cool. Um, it looks nice. They did their own bushings and there are different part numbers on the bushings. They're, they're molded right into it right here. Um, pretty interesting. Obviously, two different part numbers means it's going to cost a little bit more, but for some reason, they needed two different part numbers. It's just interesting from an engineering standpoint. Um, and again, surface finish is absolutely exceptional on these things. It's pretty cool. So the point of this, which is interesting to me, um, it puts like a bit of a torque on the sway bar. So this thing's constantly pushing the sway bar down and it pushes these links to the bottom of this rod here. Um, I didn't think it's something you'd actually need, but apparently Apex Designs, is, uh, Apex Designs thought that this was something you'd need. But uh, essentially you charge this guy, you pull off this super fancy aluminum cap, you charge this guy with like 200 PSI I think it's 100 PSI of air, and it puts a torque that pushes these things down constantly. Um, another thing to note, they have, this is like a literal aluminum valve stem cap, which is absolutely crazy. Um, took the time to actually machine this thing. I'm sure there's some CNC machine that can pump these things out um, super, super fast. You know, probably hundreds, a hundred of these in a minute or something like that. But I would have liked to see a plastic one, to be honest with you. Like uh, this is a very expensive kit, you know, a little over $700. So I would have been totally fine seeing a, a run of the mill plastic cap on there, but it is a nice touch. I got to give them that. So let's get into this box of goodies on the side here. So this is um, 
the arm that this thing would act on. So this is going to go down on here. And this is the left. So this thing pushes on this end and this would be the sway bar on here. And this is what applies the torque to keep these things pushed down. Um, it's just an exceptional part and something that's super cool to see is it actually shows the torque specs right on it. Torque specs for the top bolts, torque specs for this lower bolt here. Pretty wild. They're actually uh, cap screws, which is interesting. So cool thing about cap screws versus normal bolts, not really related to uh, this kit or anything, but cap screws are lighter. Um, this is something that's cycling up and down with your suspension. So it's cool to see uh, cap screws versus a normal six sided bolt. The reason why these are lighter is obviously this circle is smaller than if it would have been a six point and then the top head of the bolt is uh been broached out i think that's the right term for it been broached out to make that hex so you can drive this bolt so these are always um socket head screws are always lighter than a traditional bolt it's also cool to see this is a 12.9 hardware so you can use a uh, higher grade of hardware so by using a higher grade of hardware the hardware is a little bit lighter because it doesn't need to be as thick as if it were like grade eight, for example, maybe that need, they need to go up in size on that bolt. But yeah, beautiful piece. Awesome to see that the torque specs are literally printed right on the part. Moving on, we'll open up this box here. So it comes with a ton of hardware. Um, you got to do a lot of nut certing. These nut certs aren't anything exceptional. This looks like the same stuff that I buy off of Amazon for my nut cert tool. But what is really cool is these guys. So these are what's called Nord locks. Um, get these two apart. There's actually glue in between there. That's interesting. They probably don't want you to flip these the other way around. It might look like these are normal washers, but they're definitely not. So hopefully you can see that raised surface on them. So this side's pretty simple. This side is just designed to bite into the material. So this side, the upper side would go to your knuckle and this lower side will be biting into this aluminum part on the upper link. So these guys would go right here. But that's not the impressive part that they buy it in. What's impressive is this. This part right here, they're these little tiny ramps. They're probably not showing up too well on camera. At least, you know, you can't see the, the height of those ramps. They're very, very shallow. But essentially in one direction, with a torquing direction, it's easy to get it to slip up to the ramp. And then if you try to back it off in the opposite direction, it catches that little lip, which is a very aggressive um, ramp up. Um, it happens over a very, very short rotational distance. So anyways, what these are, um, these are really, really high quality lock washers that actually work other than the traditional split ring lock washers. Those things are terrible and I don't even, I don't even put them on stuff when companies include them. So pretty cool to see Nord lock washers on this thing. To be honest with you, do you need Nord lock washers on this? I, I mean, I would think no, you know, there's, there's bolts inside of engines that get torqued once and never get torqued again. Um, and those aren't even necessarily torque to yield bolts. A lot of those bolts can be reused. But uh, are those Nordlock washers absolutely necessary on everything? Absolutely freaking not. Um, but this part right here, I would, I would submit why they're putting Nordlock washers on these things is because this is an aluminum thread. And if this starts backing off and it's only engaging a few threads, it's just going to rip those things out of there. And then you got to buy a whole new link. So the Nordlock is really just uh, an extra layer of safety anyways moving on you could probably see these zip ties they have a very uh, special design in there i don't think i've ever seen a zip tie like this but what these do that special design on the end is designed to go to these nice little stainless steel um, pieces and this routes all of your uh, your abs lines and everything like that super cool to see that they're not actually um just having you zip tie your abs lines and brake lines and whatnot to the knuckle they actually have brackets dedicated to keep them you know off of everything which is which is very similar to oem nothing too exceptional in there this is super cool oh yeah apex it says apex right on the ziploc so you know these ziplocs are uh, and it's it fits this thing perfectly so they have ziplocs made specifically for them specifically for this kit so this was a pretty cool part i thought it's literally a you know a plasma cut piece of steel Pretty exceptional, right? And this, you would need a crow's foot because you can't get a socket on this because the knuckle comes down like this into this guy. So what you need is a crow's foot. That's not a very common tool. Um, and the other thing, which is cool why they include, include this is because you can get crow's foots with this, um, this hex closer or further away to this point. And they uh, specify a specific torque spec in here. So you, what you do is just grab this guy, 
put it on your torque wrench. And if this crow's foot is a different link, it's going to alter the torque setting. Or rather, it's not going to alter the torque setting on the wrench. What it's going to do is it's going to uh, it's going to change the actual torque at the bolt as you change this distance here. So they have a uh, torque spec specifically set for this guy. It's really cool that you can just slap this guy right onto your half inch torque wrench, come in there, click it off. And you got to make sure you're not torquing on it like this because that would adjust it. You got to be straight. So, but they mention all that stuff in the instructions. It's really, really cool. This guy's pretty simple. It's just a bracket that uh, this arm acts on and the nut certs would be uh, what locates this thing. This kind of saving the best for last is uh, something that's pretty darn exceptional. So it says it in the instructions, what these are for. Essentially, they're little tiny shims. It says apex on them. It says the thickness, really, really freaking cool. And what these are for is these are little shims. So what it says in the instructions is that these rubber things right here on the end could wear out over time with use. So what you would do when these rubber things on the end would wear out is they would put these little shims in there and you get it back to the right um, height because these are over center um, levers and they have to be they have to have enough pressure on them to get them to work to stay in there otherwise they would just fall right out so it's pretty darn cool that they thought ahead and they actually supplied you with a ton of these little shims pretty darn cool and then last thing in the special special box here is they actually have drill guides this is two separate drill guides just cut out of a single you know, laser cut out of a single, you know, thin piece of steel. It's probably 16th, but just get you down the, on the right, right path with that drill guide. So yeah, there you go. Absolutely exceptional kit in my opinion. Um, super, super cool. I mean, you are paying a super pretty penny for this, but you know, even down to the box is pretty, you know, and this is super cool. It's literally take this out. You can see like this cardboard is layers stacked up together, but it's like the perfect shape to fit this thing in there and just make sure these things are locked in and shipping. You know, little details like that, they just make this a crazy exceptional kit. Probably the most exceptional, uh, I don't know, aftermarket thing for a truck that I think I've ever seen. I would say this is higher quality than some, OE some OEM things or most OEM things. Pretty darn crazy.